So, Mark Anthony Hill, um, you mentioned you were from Jamaica, right? Yes. Okay, so I also heard that you were a footballer or a soccer player. Yes. So, tell, tell me a bit about that. Well, that started in uh, primary school and from primary school to high school, from high school to semi professional in Jamaica, and then from mm. there to the national program. Mm. Okay, that's nice, that's nice. So, um, let me ask you a different question. So, I know you, when did you actually get interested in doing art? Like, at what time of your life did you realize you want to do art? Or were you interested in doing I was doing art from grade five. Mm -hmm. That's in primary school. Mm -hmm. Then, from primary school to high school, it started off around grade eight mm -hmm. when I really wanted to do it you now because of the teacher who was in the mm -hmm. The teaching position. That's mm -hmm. when the eagerness kicks in. Oh, okay. So, what motivated you to want to do art? Like, what pushed you to do a certain type of art? Or where did you realize you were transitioning into something else? Motivation of art is. It's a question that most artists get asked and they choose to give a specific answer. Mm -hmm. But the truth is we don't know where the motivation comes from. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to try to even intellectualize it. Mm -hmm. It just, it just comes what it is, what it is. Okay. So from there it comes with um, searching. Mm -hmm. Do I want to do landscape? Do I want to do face? Do I want to do objects? Mm -hmm. And at some point in time, you will really find what you want to do, but you're not going to know when that time will come until mm -hmm. the time comes. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay, cool. So, who is or who are your influences? Like, who is like your inspiration? Who do you. Picasso. Picasso. Right. Oh, okay. And so why uh, Picasso? <laughs> That's a very interesting question. <laughs> That's a very interesting question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Picasso rose to prominence really and truly in the art world 1907. Mm -hmm. When he got introduced to African art mm -hmm. by another artist by the name of Henry Matisse. Okay. And that situation right there changed the entire art scene when he did the painting of uh, the Brothel of Avignon. Mm -hmm. After he saw the African mask, he decided that what he was doing conventional wise was too safe. Mm -hmm. So he utilizes the African art to express his way mm -hmm. that would be deemed this is not the modern way of painting. Irregardless, he, he, he never gave African art any justice mm -hmm. because he still didn't acknowledge that it was African art that changed the entire field mm -hmm. where art in Europe is concerned. Mm -hmm. And I grew to understand that that is why he came up with the phraseology, good artists copy, but great artists Still, mm -hmm. he knows why he said that. Mm -hmm. So I decided that, okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to study a little bit more on African art, and I'm going to merge it with European art. Mm -hmm. So I created something totally different than what one would be weird. Mm -hmm. And that is where it's at now. And we want, we want it to be weird. Because that's that like uniqueness. We, we want it right. to be weird mm -hmm. because we want to evoke that that thought procession in the mind of the mm -hmm. individual that is looking at it. We are not doing quoting and unquote conventional stuff. Right. And right. so it's all merging to one now we are we are at mm -hmm. where we are. So would you even consider yourself like a quote unquote modern day Picasso, maybe? <laughs> It's a, it's an ambitious honor, mm -hmm. but for now, I will allow time 
mm-hmm. to determine that. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I can't say as much as I want it to be that thing, mm-hmm. but I'm just going to allow time to mm-hmm. deal with that fashion and change. And we'll see if they say, oh, well, he was the modern day, because I know he was not. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not looking for either off. Mm-hmm. I'm going to let the locals let them, let them interpret their let them, thing. Yeah, right. Honestly. Let them be the judge of that. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So, what do you hope to achieve with your art? Honestly, what theme are you working with by pertaining to art? Look at it this way in terms of achieve. Mm-hmm. I've spent a lot of time studying artists, what they want to achieve, and they didn't achieve, mm-hmm. and they become bitter. Mm-hmm. So really and truly, I am not looking for nothing. I'm just going to allow time mm-hmm. to deal with whatsoever achievement. Because the achievement is not going to be based on it. It is going to be based on what the intellects and the scholars and the, the, the studious connoisseurs think mm-hmm. because of the, the artwork. Mm-hmm. I am just the artist in the world, but it's two different entities. Mm-hmm. So I'm not really looking for an achievement, so to speak. You know, I'm going to allow the intellectual <laughs> okay, no problem, no problem. All right, so would you or does your art convey any political or social, like um, political or social? Yes. So I guess um, banking on like a specific theme, maybe? Right, I mean. Or your genre or something too? My work is practically based from either something political or something social because I try to paint what is happening as I see it. Right. If it's about one thing politically, then the idea comes. Mm -hmm. If it's another thing socially, then the idea comes as well. So it depends on which idea comes first. Our, our which idea is more um, mentally potent at that time to drive me in that group to say, okay, I am going to explain myself or express myself on the canvas or on the board politically. Then it can be another thing where, okay, I'm going to express myself, express myself on the board socially are coming but it, it, it just depends on where the inspiration coming from is at coming the from at the time okay. so there is no plan mm-hmm. you know it's, it's it's just at that present time mm-hmm. no plan gotcha. okay. all, right. all right so how do you price your work let's just get to how would you price it work? i don't know how to price my What's a general so because the, the, the artist is normally conflicted with pricing his life mm-hmm. because in actuality he's putting out something that is inside of it intellectually and a canvas. Mm-hmm. Whether it is bad art or good art, it's art. And he's expressing or she's expressing herself either way. Mm-hmm. It's very hard to price something like that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's, it, it's very hard. Just like the commercial, you know, some things are just priceless. Mm-hmm. So the artist would more 85% of the time price itself out of the market. Mm-hmm. Because he knows what he's giving away and what he's selling. Mm-hmm. Compared to when you're when you're governed by guidance, again, in the artwork, they will say, okay, we need an appraiser. 
So rather than asking two dollars for that, I think you should ask another fifty. So at times artists do price themselves out, but it's not a fair question. For someone to ask an, an artist how okay, uh, how how does the price of the work go? It's, it's, re it's really not true. Uh, oftentimes he give a price and gets the money and he still feel with her. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I gave that to Dave for nothing. I should have asked 10,000 dollars more. I appreciate how you explain that. And yeah. That's from a more deep and personal right. level of experience. I appreciate that. Okay. Alright. Okay, so how do you manage or navigate the art world? Like, is it difficult? Is it challenging? It's both. Mm -hmm. It can be difficult if the individual does not believe in what you're doing. Because art is like music. We are in two different studios, mm -hmm. but it's the, same, it's, it's the same thing, our form of expression. One mm -hmm. is just with the mic, and the other is with the brush. With the brush right? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It can be difficult if you're not confident. Mm -hmm. It will be difficult. But if you're confident, then you only need that other person who is going in the same direction as you are, mm -hmm. and you may reach the destination a little bit quicker because you have both have the same goals in mind. Mm -hmm. That person believes in my work and I'm doing great work, it will go as far. But the challenge, the challenge may come from Probably the industry itself. The industry maybe. itself. Mm -hmm. What do they accept? And what they're not going to accept? Mm -hmm. That is where the challenge comes in. Mm -hmm. But I've seen artists break that challenge. For example, look at an artist like Vasily Kandinsky. Mm -hmm. He was an outcast. If we look at artists like uh, March of the, he was an outcast. In the middle part of Picasso rise to fame, when he decided to go total African, he almost became an outcast. Mm -hmm. But what they knew about him before, kind of, it, 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 it gives that cushion of excuse where they can underlook or overlook mm -hmm. this type of work that Picasso is doing. That is where the challenge comes in. Mm -hmm. the, the, the challenge has to do with what the art world accepts. Mm -hmm. That's what the challenge comes in. The difficulty comes with the confidence in the artist. Mm -hmm. It is either the he or she is confident or he or she is not. Mm -hmm. That's a difficult part of it. Because mm -hmm. if, that, if, if you're not going to be that person that believes in yourself, mm -hmm. then of course the art dealer, the curator, or the gallery, you can't expect them to believe in you as well. Right, and in the art too. Exactly. Awesome. Okay. All right, how do you make your work in demand? Or how do you create a collective space? I've never actually painted for it to be in demand. Mm. Because I, when I'm painting, I'm, I'm not doing something for the public. I, I am doing something that is coming from me, mm -hmm. that the public will see, or hopefully they will see. And if they like it, they like it. And if they don't like it, they don't like it. But I wasn't doing it for them. Yeah. Even though there is a cliche that art is for the public, our art is for everybody. Uh, um, that is just a cliche. It's not. Actually, yeah. mm -hmm. it, it is just something to make you like a, a psychological shark coming to make you feel better. Mm -hmm. But in truth and reality, no. Basquiat learned that the hard way. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it drove him to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. wow. You know, because the public can be really blue. Mm -hmm. And that is the reason why you can't pay for it. And I will use the same example of um, Vasily Kalinsky. When he started doing all those geometric forms and lines, at the exhibitions, they would spit 
literally he would literally spit on his work mm. that's true that, that is not true it's it's not an easy world to be a part of mm -hmm. the art world is is good so you're clean on history like history of these um real infamous artists so would you say that artist that you just mentioned he's part of your inspiration as well no because he, he is doing something totally different than Picasso. Mm -hmm. He was more into geographic, geo, geographical shapes and uh, mathematical things. And, mm -hmm. Okay. You know, so he, he, it was a little bit different. But there, there are other artists who were influenced by African art, mm -hmm. and, and, and they are the top artists right now in, in terms of commanding millions of dollars mm -hmm. picasso matisse paul clay paul cezanne all those and amadiglio modigliani mm -hmm. those top five they are the top five artists right now on the market in terms of financial power mm -hmm. so i try to penetrate those five what is it they saw about African art that will drive them to say, you know what? Let me go this direction and find out what happened. So mm -hmm. when I when I start to do a little bit more study on the African thing, I recognize that those art had mystical powers to them. Mm -hmm. But if you're not in tune with it, it's not gonna work for you. Mm -hmm. So what they did. It didn't work for them spiritually so they look at it and they placed it on the on the canvas and mm -hmm. that was when the power of the work started to mm -hmm. pull the world in pull the world apart and pull back the world in mm -hmm. until they have to accept it mm -hmm. that's how it works okay okay all right so how do you seek out opportunities for exhibitions 